Right, hello. Um, today I'm going to be working with gouache, which is, most of you know, um, uh, an opaque watercolour. Um, what I'm doing is I'm trying to rescue um, <clears throat> a watercolour which I think went horribly wrong uh, a few days ago. Um, the sky has gone all muddy and horrible. I didn't leave it. I messed around with it. Um, this isn't too bad, but I don't like it much. And I'm reasonably pleased with the rocks in the foreground. So I may just do a little bit more to them. But basically, this is a rescue job. Right, okay. The my palette is largely made up of uh, Le Franca and Bourgeois, um, which I love. Uh, I think one or two of them, that one, I think is um, Winter and Newton, but the rest are Le Franca and Bourgeois. I've got primary red. Alizarin Crimson, Primary Red, Alizarin Crimson, Ultramarine, Cobalt, White, um, Chinese Yellow, no, Persian Yellow, um, that is Primary Yellow, that one is um, Winter and Newton as well, um, that's Yellow Ochre, and that is raw sienna. So that's my usual palette when I'm uh, working in gouache. So there we go. Right, what I'm going to do. Oh, incidentally, over the top of the um, watercolour, I've put um, a very thin coat of um, PVA glue. The gouache will stick to it, but it won't lift up the watercolour underneath. So off we go start off i'm going to mix some sky color i'll start at the top or the back and work forward I really like working with gouache. It's, you can do all sorts of things with it. You can put it on fairly thinly like a watercolour, in which case it does have some, some transparency. Or you can use it much more thickly, almost like oil. It's very handy paint to have around. And uh, as I say, I really like using it. It's, um, it's brilliant for covering up mistakes, which is what I'm using it for today. So there we go. We've got a very pale bluey colour at the top. I might put some more in it. That's cobalt and white. Then I'm uh, a tad of yellow ochre to lighten up the sky over here very very thinly as you can see it's going on very very thin and it's working almost like watercolour at the moment brush by the way is very cheap brush from the works um, just anything will do sometimes now I'm going to do the sunsetty bit I'm a very very thin mix of alizarin and bring that into the bottom I'm going to go over 
the little village. cloud layer a little bit. All I want is a sort of afterglow. The sun has gone to bed and we're left with a little glow in the sky. It drops them in across the beach and the sea. We can build reflections on that later. And there we go. We've got a little bit of red in the sky petering out towards the top and just bring in some cloudy colour as it merges in. Right now it's looking a little bit better already and back to the white, a little tad of blue in with it, and we'll sort out the sky. Paper, which is, I think, a piece of Bockingford. £140, it's starting to buckle a little bit, even with the PVA on it, so I'm just stretching it out a bit as I go. It'll dry flat afterwards anyway, but just to stop the paint from running about up and down on a bumpy surface. Fair enough. And now, carry on with the uh, with the sky. I want to get the sky sort of finished before I go in more thickly with the foreground. Just keep the brush dancing, don't get things too regular. And there we are, we're starting to look something like now. Now, a tad of ultramarine mixed in with what's left of this alizarin, a bit of white. I'll put a little bit of raw umber in there to brown it off, grey it down. And then we'll just do some underside clouds. something of a hard edge by there but don't worry about that we can go in with some plain water afterwards and bring it together more like that So there we go, starting to look a little bit skyish. 
a new word, skyish. As you can see, I'm not being particularly careful with where my brush strokes go. Um, one of the beauties of working with gouache is that you can cover it up, you can blend it in with whatever's underneath it if you want to. Write a little bit of the grey colour, mix in just a tad of the old alizarin and get a lovely glowy feel to the underneath of that cloud. There. The darkness is meeting the sunshine. Now I clean the brush and over here I'm going to make a clearer paler blue as we go down to the horizon. Blend in with the ready colour and be a little bit careful here. Yes, so I want to keep the integrity of the horizon there. Take the red a little bit further across. it in a little bit and there uh, we've got a sort of afterglowy effect there a little bit of red in the sky this side I'll just take the grey colour with a bit of the blue a bit of the pink off again uh, just to take that a little bit further uh, I'll leave that for now see what it looks like when it's dry I'll leave that to dry then I'll tidy up those edges I'll work a bit on the beach now um, yellow ochre just mixing it quite loosely on the palette I might go in and put some thick stuff in after a tad of the blue little bit of the umber just to tie it down and then try not to drop your brush when you're doing stuff like this and just putting the beach in This isn't anywhere in particular, by the way, it's just a picture I made up. It's out of my head. Um, I'm not sure even where it's based on. Possibly somewhere like Findhorn, which is one of my favourite places. Now, I'm a little bit of cobalt in with some of the yellows I've got mixed here. And already we've got a sort of sea colour, if you can see that. It's basically a bit of cobalt and stuff that's on my palette anyway. You see that? There we go. Now. Very, very thin and watercolory.
There we are, just like that for now. Now, that's still a little bit damp, so I'm going to change my brush. Use a much smaller one. And I'm going to put some thicker paint in the foreground now, mixing up a little bit of the raw umber. Mix it in with the yellow ochre that's already on my palette. Bit of the alizarin. Bit of ultramarine and there uh, we should have a really nice dark right now that up my brush is damp but not wet so all I'm going to do here is re-put in some of the shadows no real drawing I'm just Sorting out the shadows underneath this pile of rock, breakwater, whatever it is. Which was actually constructed by putting um, a dark, thick watercolour and then scraping it out with a bit of card. Um, there we go. That's a technique for another day. This is one of the things I like about gouache. You can just get really sharp corners with it. I'm dipping into the palette paint, the actual raw colours as I go, just to vary the colour a bit rather than have a flat wash so I'm just taking little dabs from here there and everywhere some warmer some cooler whoops getting a bit thin one thing you do have to watch is if you're using a reasonably good brush just dab it a little bit dry it off a bit before you go into your paint or you'll end up doing what I just did and having very wet paint dry that off a bit more add a bit more colour to it so it's sort of milky you don't want it to run but you want it to be thin enough to paint with sort of consistency of cream for this sort of work When you're working at this level, it's quite a good idea to treat it like boils or gouache and put all oils or acrylic, put the darks in first and then you can always bring them forward, add a bit of highlight to them afterwards. Peaching out towards the sea. I'll probably put some water coming over on top of that after. Now the rocks themselves, I've got a shadow in, so a little bit of yellow ochre, just a tad of that dark mix to kill it a little bit. And I'll 
mix of bluier colour with ultramarine and some of that burnt umber a little bit of alizarin to warm it up what I should end up with is uh, that's a bit actually I'll put a bit of yellow in that it's a bit browny just play around till you've got something that'll do for the lighter cut of the dark mid-tone colors and that's the lighter ones and we've got the shadows there so all I'm going to be doing here is just dipping here and there. With different colours. like before I'm letting the brush dance I'm not being particularly accurate with where I'm putting stuff washing out in between colors and not forgetting to dry it off or trying not to forget to dry it off Remember, the sun's just set. There's not much of a direct light form. There'll be sort of glow coming off the sky. But the main source of light, which is the sun, has gone. So we're getting a sort of diffused light from the cloud cover or the sky. Forgot to dry my brush. which means the shadows won't be particularly distinct. They'll be sort of just dark areas. And as you get further away, these rocks are just in shadow. Anything that's not facing upwards will be in some level of shadow. There we go. Do for now. I'll we'll put some more. Oh, that needs doing. That's very watery, so it will dry out a bit. I'll put some more dark there. Okay, now the foreground I use a chisel brush, just very, very damp, and I'm going to lighten up this yellow colour with a bit of lemon. And this is going in quite dry. We're just doing sandy beach, which is warmer and more vibrant than the beach further on behind the rock. not 
too bright. You can see I've still left. I'll have to put some dark in there. It doesn't quite look right. That's why you should always make sure you dry your brush in between. But having made a cock up, we can always go back and sort it out again. Right there. Now in this foreground beat. A little bit more dark over that. Because I'm now going to use the edge of a piece of card if I can find an already cut one there we go it's just an ordinary piece of mounting card and what I'm going to do is pull out pebbles just to give the impression of a shingly sort of beach Remember the light's coming from above, so... And I'm trying to blend one into the other just by lifting out a little bit. I'll go in and put some more specific highlights in that later. Now, let's turn our attention to this beach up here. Right now, I'm going to use the small brush again, and now I'm going to mix up a light grey colour, a bit of blue, a bit of raw umber, mix it in with quite a bit of white, a bit of brownie, dash of a lizard in and uh, more white and there we go again fairly thick consistency but all I'm going to do is dance about on here give something an impression of a bit of texture which might be stones or rocks or whatever Clean the brush, dry it out, and using a little bit of your dark colour, let that dry a little bit first. What to do next? I know. We'll go into the background. I'll mix up a little green. Yellow ochre, cobalt, dash of the lemony colour. Again, we don't want it too bright because we're talking about just after the sun's gone down. 
and the little headland going on behind the village there now same colour I'm going to mix up well in fact I'll use this stony colour and pad of alizarin in it just to give it a bit of a ready tone and do the roofs of the houses where they're catching the moth light No detail. When that's dry a little bit, so it's not picking up, I'll darken in the sides. Now, cheat a little bit, make sure that I've got a straight edge for my horizon very light paint there we've got a glittery line at least I know it's straightish now the sea. It's very wet paint there. And put some darker coloured troughs, mix a little blue in with the dark. Again, quite thin, it will sink in and just dancing on the water. Now, I'm going to use a new brush, if I can find the right, well I'll use that, it's an old bristle brush, I'm going to get some white on it, this, straight out the tube, little bit of a splash. Hello big dog. Sorry I was talking to the dog then. There's the blue and the shadows. Very difficult doing a painting demonstration when you've got a red set of bashing at yourself. Arms. Now, a bit too dark, a bit too blue, thanks to my four legged friend here. Some of this greeny sea colour.
sip of coffee while I per peruse what's going on. Right, let that settle down a little bit. I'm using the square brush again. I want a little bit of the reflected sky on the beach. Just a turd where the sand is wet. There we go. bristly brush helps if you pick up the right one Gently coming in past here. There's a little bit of movement in it. white and Try a little bit of movement in the water, flecks of foam here and there. As we get to feel that the sea is actually breaking. It's not a big wave, I just want to get the feeling it's coming in this way. glistening a little bit because they're wet now using a rigger just gonna flick in some highlights on the rocks over there and the stones or whatever on the sea All we're doing is put a little bit of texture in. And 
where the sand is wet. Thin the white down a little bit. Right, okay. Still using the rigger. I'm going to put in the darks in these buildings now. Use the same dark I had before, thin it down a bit, a bit more brown, a little bit of blue to take it back. There. Use my, what is this? My number one rigger, this is about the smallest brush you can get and I'll just put some shadows in these buildings again I'm not painting anything in detail just a few geometric lines to give the impression that there's roofs, buildings maybe a little walkway something coming up to the to the beach not much point in having a beach if you can't get onto it dance over these stones or whatever <coughs> and a little church there which I will hopefully put a spire on that works not really Hmm, wait for that to dry and I'll go round it. So, break up the headland behind here. Indication of fields, walls, whatever. chimney pot and as it's just after sunset one or two little lights on windows now foreground still using small brush put some lights in these pebbles again nothing special just let the brush dance warmer colours yeah. 
and some of the dark just to define where some of these stones are. I'm not drawing every stone in, but I'll put some shadows in between them. Good thing about gouache is it dries very, very quickly. So let's see if I can rescue that church tower. small brush and a dark and put in a little breakwater or two and last but not least some tiny little figures just to give it a little bit of life stride along the beach And that for now, I think. It's a little bit of white in the sky. Touch the yellow with it, warm it up. I'm dry brushing now just to give a little hint of clouds. bit of wind and let's see what that looks like uh, a little bit of masking tape on top hold it in place 